Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, what my dear friend uh, Noor has asked me to do is to sell ice cream to Eskimos. I mean, this is a galaxy of minimally invasive surgeons, and I'm here talking about open surgery. So I'll just spend the next 10 minutes trying to convince you that there are some valid indications. Well, this is, I borrowed from Nagaraja Rao in Manchester, and this is basically showing that what has happened to open surgery in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, it's a predominant way of dealing with renal stones. In the 19, early 1980s, it has been dented by ESWL, BCNL, and rigid and semi-rigid urotroscopy in the 1980s, then aggressive, many PCNLs, flexible urotroscopy, and holmium laser in the 90s. And now we see that it's almost creeping at the bottom. The question is, are there any valid indications for doing open surgery in 2012? Well, if you look at the literature, you will see that extended stone burden of the kidney, treatment failure with minimally invasive surgeries, various intrarenal abnormalities like caliceal and fundibular stenosis, stones and caliceal diverticular, particularly those, the interior calices, obstruction of the UPJ and if required simultaneous UPJ surgery as well, <clears throat> stones and octopic kidney, staghorn stone. Now if you look at this list carefully, you must have seen the last one and a half, two days, that all these have been dealt by minimally invasive surgeons in one way or the other. Well, complex renal stone, is that what we always talk about? And the complexity is just not because of the stone itself, the stone burden, the caliceal anatomy, and the distribution, but it is related to the patient factors as well, which includes the compliance of the patient to come back for the subsequent procedure, the the, mob, the uh, uh, BMI and the morbid obesity that uh, a lot of our patients, it works. In fact, it was yesterday on the BBC that uh, there are more people dying of obesity than of starvation in the world now. Comorbid conditions, anatomical abnormality. I think the more important thing, at least east of where we are at the moment, is the availability of endourological facilities the expertise to do all these things, and obviously the bottom line is the cost factor. We are all aware of uh, complex staghorn stones, patients with significant uh, spinal deformities, metabolic syndromes, and these are probably some of the common indications of open surgical procedure. Forgotten stents is another important issue. In fact, Finney, when initially described double J stent about 40 years back, said that they become so asymptomatic then the patient tends to forget about them. And that sometimes still happen in 2000 and, and in 21st century. And these stents become a major issue, although one can argue that these can be dealt by multiple ways using minimally invasive techniques of urotroscopy, percutaneous approaches, et cetera, but often and sometimes it is required to do it by open surgical technique. About 12 years back, we, we did a little study and we saw that prior to the initiation of a computerized program to track patients with a double J stent, we had about 12.5% patients who were forgetting the stents and we were not tracking them properly uh, and they were coming after the expiry of the stent. After the initiation of the program, the rate dropped down to 1.2 and 1.5 percent. Cost is, is again, it's not only which is affecting the Asia, but also the Western Hemisphere now. Uh, we are becoming cost conscious. Lithotripsy, single session, uh, about $2,000. PCNL, $3,000. Open surgery, single session, nearly $3,000. If you look at our own uh, data, it's unpublished. Uh, 20 millimeter stone with lithotripsy can be dealt in about $750. If you do a daycare urotroscopy, it may cost something like $600. A PCNL with a three-day admission, about $1,500. And an open stone surgery, 
again, about $700 for three to four days admission. Now, open stone surgery is becoming a lost art, and we have to remind ourselves something that we have all learned as a resident. It, it has to be at least a supratural incision. We are always below if you are, uh, if you give an infra 12th incision. The pleura needs to be protected during retraction. That's the major site where it can get damaged. Renal ischemia, we need to be absolutely careful about the warm and cold ischemia if you're doing nephrotomies. The fluoroscopy and peroperative ultrasonography are helpful in tracking small stones in various calices. Well, if you have a large stone burden, you have an option of anatrophic versus extended pyelolithotomy with multiple radial nephrotomies. It's important that you provide adequate post-operative drainage. This is what we used to do when we were registrars. Uh, you have two, three centimeters stone in the renal pelvis. You just get hold of the ureter, make a little pilotomy, identify the stone, take it out, close it up. But this is not the stone that we deal with now. We deal with stones which are diffusely distributed in the caliceal system, and that's the only one that come for open surgery. You need to have a peroperative uh, per ultrasonography or x-ray to identify these various stones, because if you want to do a single stage procedure, and that's what open surgeons claim, that they would clear a stone, you need to have all these things. So at the end of the procedure, you would have a picture which looks like a battered kidney, extended pyelolithotomy, multiple radial nephrotomies. You can compare this with what a PCNL would do with a couple of punctures and getting rid of the stones. Well, one of the criticism of open surgery is that following open surgery, particularly with stone disease, such a recurrent problem, that you would have difficulty in doing various endourological procedures like PCNL. This nice study reported about six, seven years back and looked at whether PNL becomes more difficult after previous open surgery. And they noted that there were more attempts required to access the pelvically sealed system. The tract dilatation is relatively difficult, but the overall morbidity and efficacy of both of the procedure is not different if patient didn't have a previous open surgery. Well, the indications left for open surgery include non-availability of minimally invasive surgical equipment, limited experience of the surgeon, and sometimes the patient's preference to have a single procedure. And maybe single procedure may be cheaper than multiple endurological procedures. Argument for open surgery, open surgery, better stone-free rate for complex renal stones, and this is one of the few randomized controlled trial looking at uh, the stone-free rate for open and percutaneous surgery, 66 versus 50%. Economics, single sessions are comparable, but if you do multiple things like lithotripsy follow-up or urotroscopy follow-up or another go at PCNL, then the MIS becomes more expensive. Buchholz raised the question of training. Should we be training our residents in 2012 on doing and, and learning the, open, the art of open surgery? And the argument in favor was that there are still some valid indications it should not become a lost art. And there is, we need to have an evidence-based approach that what is the best treatment for complex stone disease. However, the argument against is that a very small number of procedures are being done, and the residents these days are more interested in learning a laparoscopic surgery rather than an open surgery. This uh, study comparison of uh, Laparoscopic pyelolithotomy and PCNL show that for large renal stones, the operative time is longer for laparoscopic pyelolithotomy, the hospitalization is longer, but the stone rate were, were similar. The concomitant UPG obstruction and the renal abnormalities like pelvic and horseshoe kidney, in author's opinion, were valid indication for laparoscopic procedure rather than percutaneous procedure. The technique of laparoscopic anatrophic nephrolithotomy is very well established. The five-port approach, taking care of the renal pedicle, is basically a duplication of what we do in open surgery, going to the Brodel's line, opening up, removing the stones. You can also do peroperative nephroscopy 
to make sure that you have removed every bit and piece. Now, what about developing countries? And I think the real issue is that there is availability of equipment for minimally invasive techniques is not universally there. There is increased emphasis on cost of the procedure and desire of the patient to have a single procedure. And then we deal with more neglected stone. Early this morning, Professor Trexer was talking about the average size of stone that present to French urologists, and it's 0.9 uh, centimeters, whereas in Asia, we still see very complex, large staghorn stones. Uh, this is something that we reported about 10, 12 years back in British Journal of Urology. We saw that uh, the, for ureteral stone, the open surgery is really taking a dip from 20% in 1987 to about 8% in 1998, and lithotripsy and ureteroscopy become the predominant way of treating the ureteral stones. The indications that we noted at that time included anatomical abnormalities, failure of the procedure, patient's preference to have an open surgery or single procedure, large impacted stone, or if there is concomitant open surgery for some other reason. This is the experience, uh, this is unpublished uh, data. Uh, this is an experience of our last three years, and we see that about 10, nine to 10 open surgical procedures are done in a year for about over 220, 30 procedures that we do in a year for uh, renal stones. And PCNL is, is still the predominant way of treating most renal stones. If you look at the European Association of Urology guidelines for open surgery, again, the recurrent theme is complex renal stones, failure of MIS, concomitant surgery, morbid obesity, and various skeletal deformities are the valid indication. But again, it's important to, re to recognize the fact that open surgery is seldom done, and our training is inadequate and the residents are not really aware of how the steps of open surgery, and still we want to do very complex stones. No wonder two and a half thousand years back, even Hippocrates noted that it should best be left to the experts. Thank you very much for your attention.